So you've picked up one of those terrific value 8th, 9th and 10th gen Intel CPUs to start your journey into PC gaming. And you need a graphics card to hold you over until the scalper pandemic is just a distant memory. Well, you're in the right place. There's plenty of used GPUs that you should consider. Just check out the videos in my Tales from the Scalper Pandemic playlist. What do you mean they're too expensive? Oh. Oh. F um, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, shit. I guess we're doing this again. Intel UHD 630 graphics were the standard iGPUs on Intel processors up until quite recently, and don't have a great reputation with gamers. This, in my opinion, is because they're being held to a standard they just can't live up to by people like, uh, well, me. Last time I looked at this chip, I established that it can technically play modern games, though only after you've radically re-evaluated your own idea of what gaming is. Of course, it doesn't have to be this way. This time I'm taking my laptop with its 45 watt i7 10750H and 16 gigabytes of RAM and integrated UHD 630 graphics and testing it out in games that are a bit more in its lane. I bring this up because as a tech YouTuber I can get caught up in AAA titles and trending games on Twitch and forget that Hades, a game that has garnered acclaim from critics and users alike as one of the best games of the last 12 months, runs on a potato. Hades is an isometric 2.5D hack and slash that doesn't have a whole lot in the way of visual settings to adjust, but at 1080 the game speeds along at an impressive 63.4 FPS on average. On the complete other end of the spectrum from an indie darling roguelike, we have the freemium multi-platform blockbuster Genshin Impact. This game can run on a mid-range smartphone, so I would have been pretty disappointed not to have got at least 30 FPS here. To do so involves selecting the lowest quality and some judicious use of the resolution scaler. Full 1080 only manages to scrape over 26 FPS on average, but dropping to 0.6, which depending on how it's being measured is probably about 1152 by 648, brings those averages up to 55. Some popular mobile games aren't lucky enough to receive an official PC port, but if you are a Call of Duty mobile player looking to get a better experience in what's actually a pretty fun free-to-play FPS, there is a workaround in the form of an emulator. The best option I've found is Tencent's Game Loop, which integrates mouse and keyboard controls better than most Android emulators I've tried. Using the ultra frame rate option in multiplayer should enable some higher FPS in game, but running at 1080 medium only saw around 40 FPS on average. Dropping to 1080 low or 1600 by 900 medium brings averages closer to 60. The battle royale mode, on the other hand, was a mess. 1080 low here saw an average in the mid 40s, but with incredible amounts of stutter. Regardless, with either integrated or discrete graphics enabled, the BR mode saw massive graphical glitches that rendered the game almost completely unplayable. In the same vein as Hades, Disco Elysium is another incredibly well regarded game that doesn't require a high end system to run it. Its beautiful backgrounds are largely 2D, and the models have low polygon counts and relatively simple textures. Moreover, as a story-driven, point-and-click isometric RPG, the 30fps average scored by the UHD 630 at 1080 is actually extremely playable. Dropping to 720 isn't really necessary to enjoy the game, but if you do, you'll see an average FPS of about 60. It's pretty common in reviewing low-end hardware to look to games from the past. And while Half-Life is one of my favourite games of the 90s, the fan-made remake Black Mesa seems far more appropriate for 2021. Depending on your preference, the UHD 630 can manage to run Black Mesa at 1080 medium and get a pretty playable 40 FPS. Dropping quality and resolution can potentially bring frame rates up substantially. Although 720 medium scores an average FPS of 50, the potato quality setting means the sky is effectively the limit. The lowest quality settings available can push over 100 FPS, potentially causing your CPU to become the limiting factor. While I'm in my mid-90s happy place, I'll throw in the 2021 remaster of seminal 1996 shooter Quake. 
For maximum performance, the remaster can be run at what is superficially the same as the original game, except with a crosshair and widescreen support built in, and does so extremely well as one might expect, averaging slightly above 148 FPS with lows in the 80s. Adding in the fancy new lighting, higher poly models, smoothed out animations and motion blur has a pretty substantial impact on frame rates. At 1080 averages only reach 41 with 1% lows of 32 and gaining a mostly 60 FPS experience requires a drop to 1280 by 720. Unlike in Quake's day, 2D is pretty in vogue right now, especially among smaller developers. 2D side-scrollers like Hollow Knight and Dead Cells don't challenge basic GPUs as much as titles like, say, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, making them ideally suited to the UHD 630. Dead Cells, one of my personal favourites, manages an average of 214 FPS at 1080 and never dips below 120. As the game doesn't have any quality settings to speak of, you're getting the same experience as a player on a high-end desktop. When GTA V first hit PCs, its trailer promoted the incredible visuals made possible by high-end graphics cards. It turns out though that a fringe benefit of being an 8th gen console game was that it actually works pretty well on as far back as late 2000s grade desktop graphics, which uh, isn't a guarantee of success on the UHD 630. Although for some reason my game crashed repeatedly after just a couple of minutes of gameplay, I did manage to capture some benchmark scores. At full 1080 and lowest settings, the game runs at 26 FPS on average. You could potentially delve into the game's config files and turn shadows off to get over 30, but a simpler option is using the frame scaling option to turn down to two thirds resolution, or about 1280 by 720. This sees a much more playable 46 FPS, if it doesn't crash. The demon offspring of 2001's Halo and 2007's Portal doesn't run quite as well as either of the games that inspired it, but it's still pretty lightweight on system requirements. Full 1080 is too much for the UHD 630, even with quality dropped to low, but 66% resolution scaling allows for about 48 FPS, which is just smooth enough to allow for some enjoyable gameplay, though if you're looking for something more competitive, you might want to drop scaling even further. Valheim is another remarkably scalable game. It can play like absolute crap on a wide range of PC hardware. I didn't bother counting frames at 1080 lowest settings, as it was proving to be something of a slideshow, but at 720 things started to look a little more acceptable, with an average FPS of 27. Let this be your semi-regular reminder of why you shouldn't get a GT 710, a card that frequently gets bundled in with modern PCs, yet only scores about 13 FPS here. I've established elsewhere that the UHD 630 isn't really up to the task of filling in for a discrete GPU. But if you can't or won't pick up a graphics card until prices and stocks return to normal, you're not limited to playing modern games at hideously low settings. While none of the games featured today are next-gen graphical powerhouses, what they are is a selection of at least highly enjoyable and at best award-winning games that not only play well, but look pretty good too. If you were hoping to see more of a train wreck, check out the video on screen now to see how Intel UHD graphics perform in more demanding titles. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.